Blog Talk Radio. Good afternoon, everyone, around our beloved planet. Welcome to Dr. Catherine May's Blog Talk Radio Show Channel Panel. Today is Sunday, June 29th, 2014, and our call today is our Ascension Training with Sananda. And I do believe I have it on good account. We're also going to welcome a special guest today, our beloved Lady Portia. We'll let Catherine talk more about about our guest. This is Meg Davis, your co-host, calling in from the Atlanta area in Georgia. And our beloved Catherine is calling in from High Falls, New York today. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Meg. How are you today? Oh, it's a beautiful day here. The sun is bright and it's just a delightful time. The energies are so high. We can feel something wonderful is coming. Yes, Something down wonderful. here in the South, too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I want to tell people a little bit more about who Meg Davis is. You have a website of your own. Will you give us your website? Well, I have a um, Facebook page. Facebook called, page, right. Mm-hmm, yes, called um, Wisdom Within One. Wisdom, Wisdom? Within One. Great. Wisdom within one. Yes, thank you. And where we so just sort of chat can... about alternative medicine and um, interesting things about the latest um, the latest healing techniques for empowering people to really take charge of of their health and their life and remember that they're in charge. So it's a wonderful thing to be able to do. Oh, and so appropriate that that Meg is the co-host for this call. Because she is a wonderful healer in her own right. And I just wanted to tell her, I was sitting here this morning with our little Noev, who's five, and who travels with us, and went to Atlanta to be at the retreat where we um, first met Meg and her friend Mark, who also is a wonderful, wonderful healer. And this morning, Noev came down and said, I want Meg and Mark. <laughs> I want to see Meg and Mark because I want to describe to the people on the call the energy that surrounds the two who are known as Meg and Mark who share a nice um, farmhouse spot in Rutledge. Um, They became friends years ago and have remained friends over the years and have decided to share a space for the, what, indefinite (laughs) whatever happens? Yes. Until magic ascension and or the RV and or, you know, all that is. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So it's the first time, I think, I have ever encountered a man and a woman who are such good friends that they are completely loving, completely helpful to one another. And that has been their stated mission, that they're there to help each other. 
And it is such a beautiful thing to see. Um, Mark had some vision problems, and so they have just fallen into step. And, of course, he, he manages it very well and, you know, never complains, just goes right ahead and does everything. But Meg just has a way of sort of backing him up at times. She just kind of knows intuitively when to be there, when to step back, when to be present, and so on. And Mark has the most wonderful, quiet, steady, helpful approach where he can step in and calm you down, give you a hug, smooth things over to make everything seem like this is exactly the perfect incident for the for this perfect time in our lives, no matter what it is. Whether it's pleasant or unpleasant, whether it's you know, easy or hard, he has a wonderful way of just making everything seem exactly right. And so it is an absolute pleasure to be with these two. Hmm. And as as we're always saying, Meg is the smartest person we've ever met. So if you have any questions about about something that you would, would look up in an encyclopedia of medical knowledge and you know, <laughs> present life, just ask Meg. So I am delighted to have her hmm. as my co-host. And it's so okay. fitting because she is... Um, as I said, an expert in her own right, and so knows all about what we're doing here and has a lot to offer in addition. Thank you, so, Thank you. Yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. And I always know that Mark is backing her up, too, because he listens to all the shows, and he's on it. So between the two of them, they are so imaginative and developing new programs, and they're going to be doing their um, healing work around Atlanta. So anybody who's lucky enough to be there, make sure you go and get in on one of their workshops because it's guaranteed to be a good time. And I bet you have that posted on the Facebook page, do you? <laughs> I need to get that on there. We, uh, we're we doing another um, fun project, I think I told you about, where we've all decided we're tired of doing things alone. Mm -hmm. And this is a time of community and gathering. So Mm -hmm. all of our healing friends have decided to join a co-op together. And Mark is part of that with our beloved Eva, who hosted Catherine and the gang when they were down here, beautiful Mm -hmm. yoga instructor and energy worker. And we've decided to all work together and and start doing programs. So gracious, just turned over her house. (laughs) (laughs) It was was just wonderful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think as I talk with more and more people, we are all feeling this. We're all feeling that we're wanting to connect and reach out. And mm-hmm. it's so much easier when we can do things together because five heads on something is so fast to come up with the most efficient and loving way to do something that it just turns into magic. And we start doing our ascension work on starting to understand our oneness and start moving any energy and any block or obstacle that we might still have in the old 3D that prevents us from completely merging and oneness gets a chance to get rooted out. And mm-hmm. I'm so grateful for that. So we are trying to do portal work down here to keep keep the fires burning from Catherine's last visit, and we're we're enjoying it. That's so wonderful to know that, you know, we we hand over the torch and then other people light their torches, and then others pass it on to more people, and it's really growing. It's really lovely. And Atlanta's a pretty special place, too, because of the Crystal Mountain there. So hmm. there's, we're going to hear more about hmm. the portal in Atlanta. Hmm. So we have a very exciting show today. That was a nice little uh, prelude. So we have, we also have a Facebook page. Um, so you can go there and not only get 
you know, information. You can get the information in a lot of places, but you'll get personal interaction, people helping each other. So not just with the RV, of course, but with all kinds of things. And the original purpose of it was because everybody was saying, oh, I'm the only one I know who's involved with this kind of work, and I feel so alone out here in, you know, the middle of Montana or South Dakota or something, and there's nobody I can talk to. Well, people go on there and they find there's somebody in the next town. So I recommend if you want someone to talk to about your ascension work and you're not in Atlanta or High Falls, <laughs> New York, you know, or Montreal, and now there's a group in Toronto that's reaching out to people as well. <clears throat> in most of the cities we've been to, there are now groups of people who are really reaching out and helping each other to do the kind of thing that you're describing, just to really connect with others. Yes, ascension is an individual practice, but when you have a group of friends and you can get together and raise the vibrations together, there is nothing like it. It is just so much fun, and it makes the whole process so much more interesting and so much more fun which is why we do these calls. So here we are on Blog Talk Radio with hundreds of people sharing this high vibration experience, being able to hear Sananda come through. And today, I've been told Lady Portia wants to say a few words, so we'll see what what she wants to talk about. But I've noticed lately they've been sort of weaving together the last message with the radio show and then comes another message to kind of tie things together and then something new on the next radio show. So they're they're sort of weaving the story together uh, to make a nice, um, to give it continuity and to answer the questions that come up. So when a written message creates questions, the next Blog Talk Radio show probably will answer them. And I think Sananda reads my email. (laughs) (laughs) So he tends to answer the questions that come up in my emails, even if I don't specifically ask. So he's right here. Um, You know, they've told us they can be in more than one place at a time. But you can feel the presence. When you call on someone and you make a purposeful connection with them, you feel their power more intensely. So by all means, I recommend that all of you as we're doing this show, make sure that that you call on your higher self and feel the energy of they will just pour love down on you and around you and and so you feel like you're inside a beautiful cocoon of light. And by the way, I there has been a lot of talk about channels who don't do blah, blah, blah and who aren't getting correct information. Um, People who don't channel are not aware. Of course, everybody's going to learn how to channel very soon. So if you begin opening your portals, you will be able to hear what I hear. And you will realize that there is such a difference between levels of energy and where the voice, the being, is coming from. For instance, Sananda's energy is a very high dimension. 
seventh dimension and above. And there is no mistaking it. It cannot be a dark one. It can't be some archon or dark entity coming through because it is Sananda. (laughs) And as just as I'm here on the phone with Meg, and I hear Meg's voice and I know it's Meg, (laughs) there is no question. When Sananda comes through, his energy is bright and light at the same time and powerful and warm. It's the difference between standing in my yard when it's raining versus standing in the sunshine. You can tell the difference. (laughs) And it's not difficult to know that the sun is beaming down on you. So I know it's hard for people to understand that or to grasp it, that yes, I know there there are sometimes channels get something of their own um, feelings and their own knowledge into the mix. Uh, This is why I spent 40 years in training, to clear away all old philosophies and um, opinions and beliefs so that I could be completely open and clear. And also, you know, the studies, um, getting a Ph.D. is a lot of work. And reading thousands of uh, articles and books in the process helps to increase your vocabulary. So this is why it's convenient for them to channel because I've read a lot about a lot of different topics. And so they can find the vocabulary they need in my memory banks. So they use, it's true that they use the channel to produce the message. But... I, for one, always ask, did I get that exactly right? After every show, after every written message, I always ask. And I do the muscle testing, and I listen carefully, and I ask them if there's anything they want to add. And often after I've written a message, they'll say, yeah, let's go back and add something. So it takes quite a long time to do the written messages because they... They shape them very carefully. And Sanandas are wonderful. If you um, are a writer, you can really appreciate the way he shapes the message so that it has a beginning and a middle and an end, and it's so carefully presented. So none of this is accidental. They work very hard to make sure that we get clear messages. And if there are sometimes, you know, a few discrepancies here and there between what one channel gets and what another channel gets, sometimes it's a matter of interpretation. Um, I can't think of a good example now, but someone who's really open-minded and is a channel doesn't get all upset if somebody else had an Um, an I where you have a you, you know? So there were, um, I know people keep writing me and say, saying, have you written, have you read Matthew's description of what happened at Flight 370? Yes, I have, and I've talked to his mother. She's lovely. And we don't have any problem with each other. There was a, a little discrepancy about the description of where they're being held. (laughs) The message was so similar that what's remarkable is how similar the messages are, not how different. The fact that, you know, a hundred different people are getting the same message and they're basically similar. That's what's remarkable about it. When you get more than one person saying, yes, they were taken by the Ashtar command and they're safe, 
that's what's important. So it's odd to me that people say, oh, well, you're wrong because, you know, you had this word in here and they had that word in there. Well, come on, folks. <laughs> you're getting really good information. So when you read um, channeled messages, also be aware that uh, the higher dimensions in the company of heaven often gives us the information that they think we're ready for at the moment. So a message one week may be different from a message two weeks later because each one will have a little different shading or a little more information or a little bit more that can help you to open your mind. I mean, look what we're talking about these days. If if they had just come right out in the first week and told us all this stuff, nobody would have believed any of it. They had to present it to us little by little. And that's what's happening now. They're giving us a little more information every week. And I want to congratulate a number of people who wrote to me and said, your messages just blow my mind. It it confuses me. It upsets me. It doesn't agree with anything I've been taught or anything I thought was true. And I'm really struggling with it. And I congratulate those people because they're not shutting the door. They're not saying you're a fraud. They're not saying um, I'm never going to think about this again. They're saying it's hard for me and I'm working at it. This is all we can do because it's all hard. And that's why we're here to talk about it, to to think about it, to air our difficulties. And this is also what people do on the Facebook pages, you know. They talk to each other about it. What we don't want to do is shut down. What we don't want to do is attack. So when you find something that looks like a discrepancy to you, or looks like it, from everything you know, it must be inaccurate. Stop and look again. And think about it. And then I have a way of doing this that maybe will be helpful for people. I look at the fact that seems to disagree with everything I know. We have some dogs visiting here. So I look at this fact, so-called fact, and I go, okay, this doesn't agree with anything I already know. So is there some greater picture, some overarching truth that might include everything I know plus what I've just been told? It's a little technique that I have always used, and it helps you from painting yourself into a corner. So you just say, okay, what what overarching fact, what larger picture might explain all of these things? And you may discover that what you thought is mostly true and what you're just learning is also true. So that's my um, little suggestion for how to manage new information that's coming in without getting too upset, without getting caught up in trying to defend old beliefs or insist that you must be right or, you know, that's always a trap. So keep your minds open. I don't know why I'm telling you all this, but they must have something ready for today. 
We're about to get blasted with another level, Catherine. I can feel it. Do you think so? <laughs> it's so funny. I just had a talk this morning with several friends about how do we stay objective when mm-hmm. information comes at us to be able to discern and live in our heart space. I'm like, why is everybody talking? about this today. I think we're I think we're going to something higher and funner. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe so. But I think if people can keep that in mind, if you don't have the answer, search for something beyond where you're looking that will create a new picture that will explain many different things. And then some. <laughs> So that's my favorite technique. And then you don't get all hung up on trying to prove that you're right, which is always a destructive move and unnecessary. Okay, so that was the little uh, clue that I think... Portia had in mind for me to present today. I can feel their presence as I was preparing for the call. I I felt just I, like I was just being bathed in warmth and light and love. So there's, it's a very positive, very wonderful time. And it feels to me like they're closer and closer all the time. The veil is thinning. So people have been frustrated about not being able to hear or not being able to make contact. I really recommend try again. Be very patient. Have no expectations. Don't expect it to sound like anything in particular. Just open your mind and let yourself feel the presence of your higher self. They're right there. We all have one. <laughs> and it's their job to oversee and and help us and guide us. Do you have any suggestions, Meg, about how you connect with your higher self? I think one of the things I do is I I I have better success when I'm outdoors. Mm. And when I'm not around any technological things, so I get away from my phone and my iPad and those things and I go outside and all my animals come outside with me and I sit on the ground and feel the sun and um move into a state of real gratitude for for what is ex- being experienced around me, whether it's birds chirping or a little lake in the backyard or just a breeze, and really feel, um, try to connect with what already is. And being able to feel the alignment with our male- beloved Tara and and then reaching up and just knowing they're there. I don't always feel oh, there you are, but I know they're there and I just continue to ask for all blocks and obstacles to be removed, help just mm-hmm. dissolve for me to mm-hmm. be able to feel. And um, and it almost always is a much better connection and when I'm outside. And so that's usually what I'm doing more and more is going outside and feeling nature and I have an easier time in connecting. Mm, that's a good that's a good suggestion. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. So today is our traditionally our healing and training call. Um and we've had a couple of requests for people who want to be included in the healing. So why don't we talk about them for a second and and give them the opportunity to know that We're thinking of them and that we are responding to their request for help. So I think you have one too, but I'll I'll describe um, 
the request that I got from Hugo Medina. Um, and this is a request to send healing for Rossi Arreyes, whom he says is like a second mom for him. And he flew to Dallas to be with her, and they will be listening to the show together today. So he's there with her and wants us to send healing energy to help her. She has stomach cancer, and it's uh, fairly serious, and she really needs our big blast of love and light to help her to heal. Now, I hope, let's ask Sananda to walk us through a little bit of the healing techniques as well while we, you know, when we do our channeling. So I think you have a request as well, Meg. Yes, I had a father, uh, Mr. Mateo, contact me um, and say that he listens to the calls and heard us offer up our contact information and wanted to include his daughter, Elaine Mateo, in the Mm -hmm. healing call. And they actually have traveled here from one of the northern uh, Midwest states, I can't remember which one, to be in Atlanta at a hospital here for a uh, treatment for Crohn's disease. And mm. with my experience with Crohn's, it is very painful. It can be very disabling and debilitating. And there's not a lot of answers in the pharmaceutical world, and mainly it does involve surgery. And I have a lot of experience working with that, And there are some natural remedies, and so he was searching out if I knew of something that could augment what she is undergoing at the hospital. So Mm. I told her several books that were influenced me, and he got them right away and has them waiting for her to read after she recovers and will follow up with after her procedure. So her name is Elaine Mateo, and she's in Atlanta undergoing some colon therapy, so we'll keep her in the in the loop and send her love and light as well. Great. Well, I'm sorry she didn't come to you a couple of years ago, but it's okay. Afterwards, you will help her to recover completely and to be finished with this. Yes. Because it is very much um, a whole body problem. And there are emotional connections. And when she learns to begin to heal herself, it has a profound effect on the disease. Just the intention to heal yourself always has an effect on any disease process. But especially these that are, you know how it is, when... When you're scared or you're worried or you're upset, your stomach aches. And you get, you know, your intestines start to churn. It's no accident that we're so vulnerable to intestinal diseases. It's part of the um, configuration of being a human being that is psychosomatic. Right? Yep. So I think Crohn's is especially uh, one of those that um, responds to emotional, spiritual, psychological, and alternative healings. Hmm. So we wish her well. Elaine, I hope she's listening. We're going to send her a big blast of love and light to help her heal. And she, of course, can listen to the archive if she's not in shape to listen today. So you'll be in touch with them, right? Yes. We're going to follow up after the surgery. Good. Okay. So Elaine and I think it's Rossi from what I can read here. So Rossi Arreyes Um, and Hugo. So let's see what Sananda and Lady Portia have to say. I don't know what they've planned for today, 
Um, but usually Sananda comes first. So he's he's nodding. He's ready to come through. So I will step out of the way and let Sananda come through and see wh- how he wants to weave all this together to <laughs> send the healing blasts and and the training for ascension that we usually include in this in this call. So let's see what they have to say. All right, Catherine. We'll give you a minute to get comfortable. Take a couple of deep breaths and do your connections with your higher self and Sananda. Welcome, Sananda. We're so glad you're here with us today. Greetings, beloved masters. Greetings, Meg. Thank you for your for your lovely addition to this call. It's a pleasure to be in the company of such wonderful healers and such eager helpers. I, too, enjoy working with a team. I always have. This is why I was surrounded by the ones who have since been called apostles. They were really my team, my friends, my initially students, but all of them strong, filled with light, ready to step in, eager to help, good healers in their own rights, and the kind of work that you're doing now is exactly what we did when I came here to take part in the Jesus Project, as we've called it. Things have not really changed all that much. I hope that people on the call will read my new scriptures. Um, We will find a way to get those out to the world a little more widely. But they're there on Catherine's website and available for all to read. There is no cost. All of these messages, all of these channeled messages, now hundreds of them, are completely free for the world to read. And we thank those who help to support, to keep Catherine going, to keep us Um, in, in this work, it has been such a growing experience for all. And you know you think of us as the ones who are already there, but it's not true. We're all evolving together. We're always learning. And everyone in the multiverse, all the beings, all the souls, All the consciousness in the multiverse is ascending. All billions and billions and billions of souls, planets, stars, humans, human-like beings, many who came before. And, of course, you know, we tell you, but it's very hard to envision for you, that there is no time. We see all the timelines. But there is a... I'll try to explain it a bit. When we say there is no time, we do not mean that things don't matter or that the things you do now do not have an effect. They do. Things are not all predetermined. That's not what we mean by no time. What we mean is that all possibilities are open at any given moment. All the possible lives you could live are laid out before you. So in a sense, there is a timeline. 
But all is open, and each timeline carries with it the possibilities of what would happen if you were to choose certain things. Well, it's so complex, it's impossible to even imagine with a human brain. I can relate to that. Nevertheless, from where we are, we see the rivers, the tributaries, the complexities, the colors, the energies that make up what might be. And so we see for all of you, each one of you, a timeline the one you are on at this moment, and all the probabilities from this moment forward. Now you know by this time in your life what kinds of choices you're likely to make, so we can narrow down the timelines. It's not completely arbitrary, but it is open. You can change your mind. It does not matter. If you have spent your life as a drug addict or someone who was overcome by alcoholism, if you have destroyed every job you ever encountered by being uh, surly or uncooperative, it doesn't matter. That is not your destiny. That is your past. And at any moment, possibilities stretch out before you. You can change everything in a moment. And this is what we mean by ascension. You can leap from the place you are at this very moment to something higher, more light-filled, more daring, more interesting, and more fun. This is why in God's world there is no punishment. There is no condemnation. There is no harsh, judgmental uh, sentence that is proclaimed upon one who has made a mess of things. We know what that's like. In fact, sometimes we come to life to experience what it's like to make a mess of things. That's one of the options. But at any moment, you can decide, I've had enough of that. I'm going to experience a different life. I'm going to choose the bright and gleaming timeline that stretches out ahead of me. I can see it. The pathway is filled with sunlight. It has a shining, clean, glowing feel to it. And there are others along that timeline, friends, whose paths we will cross. Happiness, companionship, and joy. Every single one of you no matter what your situation is at this very moment, has that timeline stretching out before you. You may be in a hospital bed. As as we were told by the two people who have requested their healings today, if you think of yourself 
in your hospital bed and you go over what happened yesterday and how you got sick and what your doctor said and you look around the room and you think, oh, I'm stuck here, this is it, this is it, I'm finished. That will be the outcome. That will be the timeline you will experience. You have no idea, beloved ones, the power of your thought and feeling together. When you feel despair and you think of a dark outcome, you create it. Right there on the spot you have created it. And it will come to pass. That is a success. Think of it. You have the power to create what you feel and think together. Those two powers together. If you feel it and think it intently together, you create it. Now many of you create many possibilities because one moment you feel despair The next moment you feel hope. The next moment you think, well, maybe I can heal myself. And so you create a sort of shadowy but bright timeline, a little foggy but still a possibility. And that's the way most of you learn to live your lives switching from one very dark thought to, oh, pull yourself up. No, I mustn't go there. But you've already gone there. You've already created it. And then you have to pull yourself back and create a different possibility. Now, those possibilities are now competing in your heart and in your mind. Which will you bring to fruition? It is your choice. Now, people who are rather open-minded often have many options available to them that they've created for themselves, but they don't realize that's what they've done. And so they continually go back to the dark one, thinking, oh, what if I lose my job? Or what if this surgery doesn't work or what if this cancer spreads through my entire body and I die well that's what you will create it's not necessarily the wrong thing to do perhaps you've done everything you want to do in this life perhaps you're ready to leave but if you're not then by all means Turn to the light. Turn consciously, purposefully away from illness, away from hospital rooms, away from tubes and machinery and and, uh, diagnostic tests and the curious results that they bring, turn away. Look instead to the thing about your body that creates health. Yes, it is your heart, your mind, and your will to live which is a deep and abiding instinct, a wonderful part of what it is to be human. Your body wants to heal. In many cases, it has been overwhelmed as the two that we are talking about today, Elaine and our beloved Mrs. Arias. 
each have been overwhelmed by the toxins and the stresses of life. Your bodies are not invulnerable to the conditions around you. The toxic food, the air that was tainted. And as you grow older, these things accumulate in your body. And so it becomes very difficult for people as they age to slough off the um, the toxins that are darkness themselves. The toxins in your world have been created purposely, deliberately created. It was an agreement. Everyone in the world has agreed that it's all right to build machinery that emits toxic fumes. If people had refused to buy those automobiles that were spewing black smoke, they would not be with you with you today. If people insisted that they will not buy things that are made from plastic, it would not be omnipresent in your world. It was a worldwide, nearly worldwide, agreement. You can change your agreement. Of course, you can't refuse to breathe, but enough people have refuse to tolerate things like chemtrails and factories that are spewing black soot that it has been changed. Your air is becoming clearer and cleaner in spite of the growing population. Yes, there are places in the world that are still toxic uh, pit pits where the garbage of human activity tends to collect and settle. But people are waking to this impossible situation. And as they do, the tide will turn. It is already turning. There are many countries and now places in the United States that are simply refusing genetically engineered food. They will not accept it. They won't buy it. They won't plant it. They won't grow it. And they won't eat it. And that, beloved ones, will put companies like Monsanto completely out of business. Of course, they'll fight back for a while, but you're going to see them simply crash and burn because the world will no longer tolerate the propaganda and the threats and the dire descriptions of what will happen to the world if they don't use their magnificent new as as it's been called, Franken-food. Now, there's no reason, no accident why I'm talking about Franken-food here on a healing call. Anyone who is now suffering from any disease whatsoever must eliminate all prepared food, which often has the toxic, genetically engineered creations in it, You must eat fresh and clean food. That is the best medicine there is. And then, discipline yourself. Now, I don't mean beat up on yourself. I mean put your foot down. I will not think 
depressing thoughts. I've made up my mind. No more dark, dire predictions for myself or the people around me. I will not participate in those fear-mongering thoughts. Oh, you know, it's a die it's a terrible world out there. We're going to have a war. You know, there is going to be an uprising and the Middle East is going to burn. No, it is not. You could try to make it happen that way. But it will not. It has already been decided in the councils, the councils of humankind, in cooperation with the higher dimensions, with the Intergalactic Federation of Light, that planet Earth will not be allowed to go down in flames. It will not be permitted that planet Earth continue to suffer, that the people on it continue to be sickened and destroyed by the dark forces. It is done. Those days are finished. When people would have free reign to do whatever they chose, as long as it made a profit. And then they created a whole philosophy of life and even a legal system to back them up that said, anyone who interferes with me is interfering with my freedom. Well, nonsense. No one is free to destroy everyone around them. That's not freedom. That's destruction. Do not confuse the two beloved ones. No one should be considered claiming their freedom when they decide to pour toxic chemicals into the stream. That is not freedom. That's defiling Mother Earth. No one should claim freedom when they decide to go on the airways and slander and um, make up vile stories about someone they want to defeat. It has become such a common occurrence in your political systems, especially in the U.S. where so many people are watching television and there is so much money being invested and permitted. Unlike most countries around the world, it is not yet standard form to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on a political campaign and thousands and thousands of hours of incessant barrage this one is um, philandering and that one is gay and this one stole all the money and this and mostly stories that are simply made up out of thin air There is no checking for fact. There is very little real investigative journalism where a newspaper would carefully oversee all the writing of its its news reporters, would carefully check the facts, and would insist on documented evidence. And then... Beloved ones, the the news was interesting to read because people quoted their references. They gave the actual evidence and they would have to corroborate it with others. That was a time when people insisted upon truth on their airwaves. You have gone far from that to the point where you expect to be lied to. You expect to hear all kinds of talk about 
disgusting things, impossible things. And I don't mean the kind of impossible things we're offering to you. We're offering you hopeful things that you might have thought were impossible in the past. We're opening your eyes to something more wonderful than you ever imagined. I'm not talking about that kind of impossible. I'm talking about, oh, this one is really, uh, this woman is really a man in drag. Or, and here are the photoshopped photos to prove it. Or, um, you know, your, your president is really a Muslim. Well, never mind that he never goes to a, to a Muslim service and he hasn't raised his children Muslim and he has never once suggested that he or anybody else should be Muslim, not that there would be anything wrong with it. But how do you claim something like that when there is absolutely no evidence? None. And yet people keep repeating it over and over again. So there is a policy. Now I wrote about this in my message that was posted late last night or early this morning, depending on where you are. You see assertions all the time on your airwaves. People proclaiming the truth because they know it. They feel it in their bones. They have it on, you have it on my word, I know this to be true. Well, okay, that's not a truth. That's an opinion. There is a difference, beloved ones, between truth and opinion. I want to be the officer of this corporation. So I'm going to spread rumors about the present officer and I'm going to get everybody to think that he's um, a gambler and a cheat and a philanderer. And then nobody will trust him. And besides that, he's stealing there have been many a person who has been defiled and even fired from their responsible and respected positions because of rumors. You remember the Salem witch burnings, don't you? Do you think those women were actually witches? We know the evidence that they were simply people of God who wish to help midwives, healers. There still is that element on the planet. There still is that element in in India, for instance, where women can still be burned for doing something that their family didn't approve of. And it almost doesn't matter what it is. There are women who can be killed. And it's called an honor killing. There can be no such thing. There is no justification for ignorance and anger fueled by unfounded accusations. Much of it is magical thinking, but it is magical thinking backed by ego. It is not of the heart, and it is not of the light. Now, do you think if people were actually demanding evidence and uh, a fair trial, that I would have been 
so vilified in my life as Jesus? Do you think there would have been crowds allowing a public display of hatred? Of course not. Hatred is hatred. There is a very funny ex- expression that you use. Lipstick on a pig. You cannot put lipstick on a pig and make it look like anything but a pig. <laughs> well, that doesn't do justice to pigs because they're actually very cute and lovable and smart. But the expression will do because no reasonable pig would ever be attracted to lipstick. So the expression works well. Destruction and hatred are destruction and hatred, no matter how you dress it up. No matter how many times you say the words, I am of the light. I am doing the right thing. I believe this person should be burned at the stake for the good of all. This is what the Salem Witch Trials were about. We're protecting you from these vile women who are dangerous. They're dangerous to you. They're dangerous to your children. They're dangerous to our community. They must be eliminated. And those people felt completely righteous, completely warranted in their judgment that these people should be killed. Still, around the world, that theme plays over and over. It is my right to vilify and accuse because I feel like it, because I know it, because I'm right. And I'm protecting the world by degrading, humiliating, and attacking. Beloved ones, an attack is an attack. And it doesn't matter if you're dressed in fatigues or if you're wearing a pretend halo. It is still an attack. We are entering a time when there will be no more room in any of our lives for backstabbing, pretense, and destruction. You yourself say you want to eliminate all that from your world. You want us to eliminate all that from your world. Well, how, I ask you, how will we eliminate it from your world if you insist on keeping it? You have free will. We cannot take away your favorite weapon. We cannot change your minds. We can only present you with encouragement, with help, with heartfelt information. Now, granted, these are only words, but they are words that come from my heart. They are words that I send to you with the greatest love. I see you lifting yourselves. And it is an old story. When you lift yourself, there will always be someone who is trying to pull you down. That is the way of the path of learning that we have all chosen. And now we are leaving behind that path 
where we expect it to be pulled down, where we expect it there would be attacks all around. Yes, it was a kind of conditioning. And if you weren't being attacked by someone else, you'd better attack them before they can attack you. It was a way of life. It was ingrained in every philosophy, in every perspective of life that was taught. Free yourselves, beloved ones. Free yourselves. It is time. Do not permit yourself to be dragged down into accusations, made up stories about disaster and destruction and nefarious and evil deeds that others are probably going to commit or may have committed or are thinking about committing. This is not the way of the light. I have taught you before, and I continue. Know the difference between light and dark. This way you cannot be tricked. Know the difference and turn to the light. And if there is someone that you see (coughs) hang on (coughs) we'll be right back we'll just give Catherine and Sananda a second to clear the tickle Uh, out of her throat yes that was a big tickle yes (laughs) welcome (laughs) sometimes when I when I come in (coughs) <coughs> to the body of the channel. It creates a, a tickling or a sneezing. <laughs> there we go. So I was saying, I have taught you, <coughs> beloved ones, When you see someone who is not of the light, whether you're sure or not, send them love. Generate that feeling of love in your heart and make sure (coughs) it is untainted by jealousy or anger Simply send love. It is powerful. It is a far more powerful intervention than sending a diatribe over the airwaves for others to hear. Put that behind. All of that commentary, analysis, critiquing, Picking apart, nitpicking of those you see in power. It has become a favorite game to destroy the memory of famous people, to cast aspersions on ones who have done good work. To look at them with a jaundiced eye and say, well, they may have done made great discoveries, but this one was a pedophile and that one was a philanderer and this one, so on and so on and so on. It has reduced everyone to the same dark common denominator. We leave that behind when we raise ourselves to say, I will not get into the gutter and wrestle 
this being to the ground, I will stand tall. I will stand for love. And I will proclaim it. But I do not throw it in anyone's face. I do not ridicule those who are not like me. I do not brag about how better I am at doing this love thing. That would be ridiculous and hurtful. When you send love to another being, you raise them up. You create an energy flow that will go right into the person. And if there is an opening there, if they do have a place in their hearts where they can receive love, you will be doing a great service. Now, I do not mean that we should turn our backs on every transgression. Of course not. In the higher realms, we operate always on a democratic system. It's very easy when everyone is loving But our understanding is that people will choose to rise to higher dimensions or they will choose to count themselves out. The same is true now. As you look around you, there is no need to attack and vilify anyone. They are showing themselves. They are creating evidence for their own disaster. Of course, there will be those who will um, uphold the laws of the land, and that is very important. (coughs) It's also very important that they do it with an even hand and with love behind it, not punishment, or revenge. Yes, there are times when we must protect the greater community by separating someone who is dangerous to others. We don't pretend that there is no such thing. We have ways to isolate them, to set them aside so that they can't do their damage. There are processes in place to take care of that. And so we don't need hangings in the public square. We never needed hangings in the public square, but it was a very popular pastime through the Dark Ages and beyond. And so... I am pushing you, aren't I? I'm prodding you. I'm poking my elbow in your side and I'm saying, Hey, look, we're here. This is how we do it. It's all right. You can leave that behind. You don't need to get down and dirty. You don't need to pick apart every every fault of every person you meet. Everyone has their warts. That's okay. Who are they? As a being, what do they stand for? What's in their heart? What is their motivation? Be observant, but be calm and be objective. Why would you have a stake in it? Yes, you want fairness and you want justice. 
that's enough. If you're applying fairness and justice across the board, there is no one in particular that you would want to see punished. Raise your sights, beloved ones. Don't allow yourself to be dragged back because it is a time of decision and a time of choice. You are choosing between the light of the coming golden age and the past, the past that has held such darkness. It is time. And there are bells ringing to proclaim the choice that is ahead. Look forward with joy. Raise yourselves. Raise your eyes. Do not look at the ground, searching for every dark thing that might trip you up. Raise your eyes to the heavens. Look for your friends who are there cheering you on. Bring your love, your excitement, your joy for life to every encounter. Every word you say, listen to it. Test it for light. How much love does it contain? Do you feel joy as you say it? Do you feel at peace? Are you emanating the energy of peace? That is for all to work on. To perfect. Yes. You can work on something to perfect it. That means you're going to concentrate hard and focus and keep getting better and better. And together we will all raise our vibration. We will all celebrate Love is a very exhilarating and happy feeling. There is no jealousy or anger or darkness in it. There is no fear in love. I repeat that. There is no fear in love. Hold that in your hearts, beloved ones. That knowledge that you are made for love. And now is your time. Now is your time to claim that destiny. To embrace who you are becoming and to celebrate with those around you the coming of the new golden age. We will dance together, beloved ones, all of us together. I love you without end. I am your Sananda. Thank you, Sananda. Namaste. What a powerful message. Hi, Catherine. Hi. What a message. Mm. We'll give you a second to get yeah. some water and yeah, that was <laughs> that's okay. It, we all get choked up. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, I what really a... felt his presence so powerfully. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. I don't I don't know if we've gotten quite a clear ascension training type of um, wonderful things to look for and to... Um, and to evaluate, to put ourselves through a new, in a new light, to have us raised to another level of mm. connection with love and with each other. And I was just sort of taking notes about um, what he's asked us today with his um, loving prodding and that's what this ascension training is all about, to be able to let us look and give us another perspective on things that we've just had all our lives and he's putting new light on these. And I love that part where he said, listen to every word, how much love travels on that word, how much peace is mm. in that word. Oh, it was beautiful. And and also the request to really listen to the information we allow in our ears, to really listen and f- use a different filter. Is it truth? Is it loving? No matter who it comes from. And mm-hmm. give us another way of sorting through all the data and all the opinions out there. And he just continues to strengthen and give us more tips on how to feel into our truth. Thank you, Sananda. Mm -hmm. How lovely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Catherine. I saw him as as he was talking. I, you know, I often get images of what they're talking about. And I saw Sananda putting his foot down and simultaneously opening his arms in like a welcome to all. Mm -hmm. It was like this, he was rising, he towering really. And what he was expressing was strength, and solidness, but standing his ground and also opening his arms at the same time. Mm. Mm. It's how I think of him as strength and wisdom and love combined. Mm. But he was clear about putting his foot down (laughs) <laughs> yes, we felt that. <laughs> uh-huh. And and he really he came with lots of examples today so we could really get a feel hmm, and good. start to hear mm-hmm. and be able to taste the words of someone. Hear the words, hear the tone, feel the intent. Because as somebody said to me once, you can say, I love you, or you can say, I love you. Mm -hmm. Same words, of course, but they carry such different things. And and then also a challenge for our own words. I mean, I, oh my gosh, so many wonderful things to be able to think about and a challenge to ourselves to make sure that we're bringing forth that same loving voice and forgiving the little small things, just seeing the big picture of love. very powerful. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a nice description. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like he just keeps challenging us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ascension <laughs> okay. training. Here we go. That's right. Here we Maybe go. Not, we're not one hundred and one uh-huh. anymore. We're two hundred and one. We're in the <laughs> we're in mm. the sophomore class now. Yeah. yeah. At least. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This feels like graduate school to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, hmm. and no, what's funny when I got the tickle and I felt this <laughs> really big tickle. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, he was talking about our words. So, how can that not come through? You know, 
<laughs> Everybody's throat chakra just gets a clearing. Thank you. A healing with all of our words. And mm-hmm. so you are our surrogate, Catherine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fun. <clears throat> all right. So we, um, I hope that she's doing it this time as well. Our beloved Kier has been transcribing these messages. Mm. And Gabriella posts them on Facebook, so we have the written version now, the transcript of these shows. So I want to thank her again for for doing that. I'm also working on doing a whole reorganization of how we present this material because there's so much, and it's really important how we organize it and get it together. And we're going to do a whole new website and a whole new way of organizing things so so it's accessible and um, present for people and easy to find. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. So we're working on that. And I'm getting good help. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to that. But there's a lot, you know, every week. Mm-hmm. There's more and we just keep moving. You know, messages and radio shows and Things happening so fast and so much information. So I'm going to get some help on how to organize all that. So we had mentioned earlier that we're not going to take um, questions today. Uh, We do take questions on our Wednesday night call. So I think we're going to do that again today. Um, rather than answering questions today, we'll give people time to think about today's message, maybe to listen to it again, because I've found that if you really listen, and then you go back and you really listen again, your questions will be answered. You'll get the hang of it. These, These lessons are not something that you can just put in words with a yes or no or a, uh, you know, a small explanation. These are global life questions. So I think we just have to really listen and follow along and try to do as Sananda does and do as he's teaching us. And then I think the questions will be answered. But we will leave time on Wednesday, Wednesday night for questions. Very good. So I don't know if Lady Portia has anything to add, but we will ask her. And perhaps she'd like to close the call. She's saying with a a bit of a meditation Mm. that will help to ease these lessons and to help us go into this learning process with a sense of peace and calm because that's very important. It can be um, overwhelming to think, you know, oh, you mean I've got to change everything I've always ever done and always thought and everything I knew and everything I feel and <laughs> can be a bit overwhelming. Mm. But yes, we can. I've seen people really turn their lives around completely. Well, we've done it ourselves. So we know it can be done. So let's see what she would like to bring through. And then we will um I'm just asking her if she wants to close the call. She's saying no, she'll turn it back to us so we get to say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> Very <course>. good. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so let's see what she'd like to say. All right. 
So we'll give Catherine a little bridge, although her higher self is um, a thought away. So settle mm-hmm. in and a little water and clear your clear your throat. Yes, dear. <laughs> Beloved Portia, welcome. <laughs> Hello, dear Meg. Oh, yes, it is a challenging time. Sananda's message was, well, you might think a little stern, but there is nothing stern about Sananda. He is strong. He has great integrity. But it all is, it all is surrounded in a glow of love and compassion. This is what I'd like to underline for everyone today. When you go about trying to change, and now we're talking only about changing yourself, are we not? You cannot change anyone else, of course. They have to do it for themselves. That's what he meant by sending love. If you see someone who needs to change themselves, the best thing you can do is to send them love. You can't browbeat them into being the way you want them to be. That would be destructive to you and to them. So if there's someone who you see is doing things that you don't approve of or you don't like or even things that cause you pain, you cannot force them to change. You can send them love and you might even want to back away a bit while you see if they're going to accept the love and use it well. If you send love and the person rejects it or they Step on it. Don't deplete yourself trying to change someone who really does not want your help. Move on. Look to yourself. What would I like? What would I like to see more of in myself? What qualities do I have that I really admire? I can strengthen those qualities. This is how we change. I see that I have a tendency to be generous. Well, there are times when I have a tendency to be the opposite. So, rather than beat myself up or feel dejected about the fact that I did something that I really don't approve of, well, that was yesterday. Today, I'm going to work on elevating my quality, generosity. I will spend today thinking about what I might do to express that quality. It can be a large thing or a small thing. In fact, the small things are sometimes the best because you can do lots of them. And in that way, you increase your light and you increase the light around you. Pick a virtue for each day of the week. I challenge you, in the coming week, pick a virtue that exists in yourself for all human beings. Carry the potential for great virtue and concentrate on Monday. Concentrate on your own generosity. 
Create moments where you have the opportunity to reach out and do something generous. It doesn't have to have anything to do with money. Generosity and kindness go together. Anything that is an offer to make someone else's life happier, more fun for a moment, telling someone a joke is generous, especially if it's a very clever joke, especially if it suits them, that's a generous thing to do. And then Tuesday, think of another virtue that's precious to you and others and that you would like to develop and strengthen in yourself. For instance, gratitude. When I feel gratitude... It makes my heart sore. Do it more. All day long. Remind yourself. You can even keep track. I'm going to make a list of all the things I'm grateful for. And every hour on the hour, I'm going to increase my list by three or four things. By the end of the day, you will be brimming over with gratitude and reminded of so many things in life for which you can be grateful. There is a beautiful maple tree shading the room where we sit now. I feel gratitude to that beautiful tree that blocks the sun on hot days, that stands guardian on the lawn, shading the roof. It is a beautiful thing, a tree protecting the family that lives beneath it. Look around you. Do you have a comfortable chair to sit in? Be grateful for that. Do you have a color in a painting or in your rug that you particularly are attracted to? Gratitude is a wonderful thing, and it will raise your vibration and expand your heart and by Tuesday night, you're going to feel different. And Wednesday, practice patience, for instance. Now, you choose your own. These are just suggestions. And as you go through the day, concentrating, focusing, everywhere you go, every word you say, everything you do, Concentrate on making it an expression of that particular virtue. You see, I'm continuing the lesson that Sananda gave you to listen to every word. This way, you have a particular word to listen to, a particular virtue to develop in yourself each day of the week. You will think of the ones that are particularly dear to your heart. I don't want to fill in all the days because yours will be different from mine. I'll give you one more. The appreciation of beauty. That is a particular virtue that brings out expressions of creativity in all its many forms. 
that's one that's inherent in everyone, but not as developed as it might be. And it is the one that is the counterpoint to what Sananda was describing about the the narrowing and the pettiness and the attacks that have been so common and so pervasive in your culture. One of my favorite examples is, you know, all over the Internet there is there are commentaries here is a picture of this movie star in her bathing suit. Do you think she should be out in the, in the, on the beach looking like this? Do you think she ought to? Oh, for goodness sakes. Go swimming. Have a good time. Why would you want to interfere with someone's enjoyment if they want to take a swim and be at the beach? that kind of pettiness and nitpicky uh, critiquing is the opposite of an appreciation of beauty. Beauty and grace. Look for it. Not for the faults in the things you see, but look for the beauty in what you see. Look for the beauty in the person standing before you. And I don't mean just physical beauty. You can include that if you wish. But don't miss how attracted you are to the sparkle in a child's eyes or the sense of vitality. That's a special kind of beauty. And now you fill in the rest of the week. Now you might have a little trouble at first thinking of all your virtues because the things that come easy to you and are part of your nature, you tend to ignore or diminish or overlook. What about your attraction to something that's higher, something that transcends the day-to-day life, your spiritual feelings of connection to God. Did you think of that as a virtue? Well, now we should talk about what virtue means, shouldn't we? It does not mean anything having to do with straight-laced or righteous. It is simply a quality, a human quality of goodness and strength and light. The qualities within you as a unique individual which when you express them make you shine. Think of those things. It is also a virtue to be physically capable, adept, strong, competent. Honor, courage, Loyalty, intelligence. Now, we don't mean pedantic or pompous. We mean creative, clever, expansive. Ingenious. What about creativity? Be specific about yourself. What does your creativity look like? Different from others. A special turn of mind, a special ability to see colors or 
or spatial relationships. Every mind is different. Every being is different. Every life experience is different. You, beloved ones, are absolutely unique. There is no one else on the planet or in all the cosmos that is exactly like you. Whether you think of yourself as this body you're in now, whether you think of your higher self, who is you, there is no one else just like you. And so do not wish to be like someone else. Instead, Develop your own inner qualities and you will become the most brilliant, light-filled version of yourself. And this is what we mean by being God. You will become the expression of God You see, words are so important. I must add to that statement. Not only will you become God, but you already are God. And so what you're doing by developing these virtues is acknowledging each one, each power within you, each gift, you bring. And this is what God does. It is what God is. Be the brilliant, loving, generous, kind, and bright you. I wish you great love, excitement, and fun. And I will return on Wednesday night. I'm going to ask you all, how are you doing with your exercise? What were your first days about? How did doing this help you or change you? What are you going to do next? From now on, make this a program for yourself so that each day you take one of those little sticky papers or a little note and you put it up on your mirror or on your refrigerator and say, Today is Creativity Day. Today is Generosity Day. And we'll talk about it on Wednesday. Until then, I send you my great love and my gratitude for your expansiveness, your humor, and your goodwill. Namaste, all. Thank you, beloved Portia, for your message. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> no, wow, we calendar. have quite the assignment list. Yeah. Oh, I saw <laughs> the calendar with a <laughs> title for each day. Oh, I know. Well, I was went online and I looked up a list of virtues, and I'm like, I'm going to post that on the Facebook group page so we can all have fun. I saw each of us taking our name and then looking up this long list of alphabetized virtues and picking out our name with a virtue with each letter and putting it up <laughs> on our oh, refrigerator. <laughs> there were like 400 virtues. I had no idea we could all be that good. <laughs> wow. 
Well, that might work if you use your name because of the way these things magically seem to come together. But first, I think, you need to discover which ones. I have an idea. I used to tell people, if you want to know what you, you know, what your career will be, go read the college catalog and take the courses that make your mouth water. <laughs> that was my version of counseling. <laughs> Um, go to the list of virtues and see which one pops out at you or which ones Hmm. or you feel like a special meaning just pops off the page or one that you go, oh, I don't have that. I'd never have that one. That's way too, you know, pick that. (laughs) probably what you'll find you're really good at. Hmm. Oh, this is going to be fun. And she's wanting to hear, so we're going to have to do a little offering up on how the next two and three days go. I think she's going to want to report. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have still half of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Mhm. So let's go for it. Let's do it on the Facebook page, the group page, yes. right? Let's do it. Yes. <laughs> That'll be fun. And have people just give a few examples of how they interacted with that virtue and let us all increase our understanding of different ways we can we can express that. Like her like her example of the are you sitting in a chair? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm very grateful for my chair. Who would have thought something so every day? So mm-hmm. it's nice to have reminders of the everyday small things that we take for granted. This was so much fun. I'm completely, I just didn't even expect this at all. <laughs> we didn't talk about this earlier. So this is delightful. I'm happy to have a, a real structure to Mm -hmm. use that always makes the learning process easier to have a structure so here we go we've got our our fun joy fun joy marching orders (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. right oh and i bet people on the page on the facebook in the group will come up with all different fun things to ways to practice this. Yeah. All right. Well, this was really a fun call. At least fun for me. I hope, <laughs> I hope it was for others, too. <laughs> it was. She she put a nice, soft, loving um, touch at the end. Very sweet. Mm-hmm. You can just heal, hear her loving and sparkly eyes and smile. It was very <laughs> touching. Yes. Well, it always helps to make things concrete and manageable, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have our assignment for the week. And we'll all join back together with all of you and our guests on Wednesday at 8 o'clock for our lady Mm -hmm. Portia Godden guests. She said she'll be back, so we'll look for her. Yeah, that'll be a fun Mm -hmm. week. And, of course, we'll be here next Sunday, same time, at 2 p.m. Eastern. So we will have this regular schedule for the foreseeable future, so people don't need to be searching for us. They will know we'll be here. And thank you, Meg, for being our co-host and Oh, I forgot to tell everybody we have a fabulous new picture of Meg. Oh. And it's going to be, we're going to put it on the blog talk, you know, um, what do they call it, where the pictures revolve around. And it will be on Facebook. So all of you can see beautiful Meg in all her glory in front of a field of poppies, wasn't it? 
there was a very fun festival called the Mommies and Poppies Festival on Mother's Day. And <laughs> and your friend Mia, who you met when you were down here, um, mm-hmm. with her children, we all went together and we got some beautiful pictures of the flowers. So that was a surprise. So I'm working on being comfortable with transparency. So thank you for the... Thank you for oh. the opportunity to think deeper into that. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I think it's so important that people be able to see who you really are. Mm. And that picture just really captures some of the joy and the fun that is Meg. So <laughs> I can't wait for people to see that. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Catherine. And wonderful. And thank you, of course, Sananda and Lady Portia for being here. And what a wonderful call. Thank you so much. Yes, thanks all. Mm-hmm. And we'll see you on Wednesday. Wonderful. Bye, Catherine. Goodbye, Bye, everyone. Meg. Bye, everybody. Bye.